All right. Well, good morning, Glad Tidings Church. Good morning, friends. Good morning, visitors. Good morning, uh, Facebook scrollers. Hey, if you're scrolling, stop. <laughs> stop right here. Uh, you didn't just happen to scroll by this by accident or by chance. Uh, you have landed in the middle of the house of God with a group of believers celebrating his presence and who believe that he speaks to us today. And that if, if you just happen to be scrolling at the moment that I said that, then he's definitely got something to say to you today. So uh, stop your scroll, put the phone down, get in a spot where you can be undistracted for a while. And uh, we're going to believe that the Lord is going to speak to you. We, uh, well, I'm just going to talk to you since uh, if I explain it to you, everybody else will know too. Church around here usually starts at 1010. Uh, but because it seemed pretty weird to do a live stream at 1010 on Sunday mornings, we start at 10 and we just do about 10 minutes of pre-service worship. And so uh, you're welcome to join us. We encourage you to join us. Open up your heart. Give God some praise. Uh, we're going to throw back a, an oldie but a goodie here to get ourselves uh, into his presence, to get our mind off of whatever might be on our day this morning, to shake off maybe a tired head or a cloudy head. Uh, maybe you stayed up too late last night. Maybe you didn't sleep well, but God has uh, some energy for you this morning, and it's an energy source like nothing you've ever encountered before. It's better than coffee. I've been off it for three weeks, and God is better. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but if you don't know him, you might need some convincing. Sing that with me again. Higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change. One thing remains. Yes, one fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up it never runs out on me your love your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me 
to love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love in death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your. Separate my heart from your great love In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love My debt is paid, I'm confident and covered of my heart from your great love Your love never fails It never gives up and never runs out on me Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me Your love never fails It never gives up and never runs out on me Your love Fails and never gives up, and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, and never runs out on me. Your love. Thank you for your love, Jesus. Your love is better than life. Your love is better than anything in this world. We praise you that you constantly pour that love out on us. You never remove it from us. You never take it back. You never withhold it from us. It is always pointed in our direction. It is always for our good and only for our good. We thank you for that love that embraces us. We thank you for that love that covers and protects us. We thank you for that love that calls us your children, that identifies us as your, as, as your own. We thank you for it, God. We thank you for it. And I'm about to take over this service, so I better invite our, our sister Cheryl Pendleton. She's going to open us up in a word of prayer. It is 1010. So we've begun, but we haven't begun. We've, we've started, but now we're starting. I want to welcome you again, and thank you, sister Cheryl. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Jesus, we are on the mountaintop. We can see your glory. We can see your presence. We can feel your presence. We are on the mountaintop from the 21 days of prayer and fasting. God, you have been so good to us. You have loved on us. You have downloaded new stuff into our spirits. And we praise you and thank you for that, God. We thank you for your love that it never fails. No matter what the circumstance is, Jesus, your love never fails. We want to stay on the mountaintop. But we know that's not going to happen. But we know we can always be in your presence. We can always feel your presence. We can always be in your glory. Visit us today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Visit us today, God, as we worship you and love on you. And thank you for your goodness, Lord. We praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have won, victorious, you have come, what was stolen, 
you brought back to us. Oh, victory, you have won. Victorious, you have come. What was stolen, you brought back to us. Our champion, you fight for us. You made a way when there was none. Our champion, you're strong in us. The debt we owed, you paid in blood. Oh, you paid it all. You gave your all so that we could have all. Say the one in whom, the one in whom we belong. We'll lift our voice, join your song. We were orphaned, now forever young. The one in whom we belong. We'll lift our voice. Join your song, we were orphaned, now forever yours. Our champion, our champion, you fight for us. You made a way when there was none. Our champion, you're strong in us. The debt we owed, you paid in blood. Champion, you fight for us. You made a way when there was none. Our champion, you strong in us. The debt we owed, you paid in blood. Oh, that wonderful cross. Where you took away the charge that stood against us You took the pain, you took our sickness, you took our dead Oh, you made us friends of God You wiped our past clean Oh, you gave us new hearts, Lord So we'll shout it out from the mountain tops that our God is good. He has overcome. Let all the earth, every tribe and tongue, we will sing it out. He has overcome. We'll shout it out from the mountain tops that our God is good. He has overcome. tribe and tongue we will sing it out he has overcome let all the earth oh every tribe and tongue we will sing it out he has overcome let all the earth every tribe and tongue we will sing it out sing it out he has overcome champion you're strong in us you made a way where there was none our champion you're strong in us the dead we owed you paid in blood our champion you fight for us you made a way where there was none champion you're strong in us the dead we owed you paid in blood hey, hey, yeah. you paid in your blood Lord oh you gave every last breath so we could have the breath of your spirit Lord 
So we'll shout it out from the mountain tops that our God is good. He has overcome. Let all the earth, every tribe and tongue, we will sing it out. He has overcome. Oh, you overcome, Lord. You are victorious. to you. Everything will worship you. Everything will declare the matchless name of Jesus, 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 Jesus. Precious Lord Jesus. Sing a song of love to you. Precious Lord Jesus, treasure of mine. Oh, what a privilege to be your delight. Morning by morning, new glories I see. Oh, what a wonder you are to me. And all of the promises and all of the praise, all of your people sung through the ages no matter the season the song is the same great is your faithfulness great is your name great is your faithfulness great is your name God of our fathers you're the God of our the Redeemer of all his story High King of Heaven my victory won still be my vision still be my All of the promises and all of the praise All of your people have sung through the ages No matter the season, the song is the same Great is your faithfulness, great is your name And all of the promises and all of the praise All of your people have sung through the ages, no matter the season, the song is the same. Great is your faithfulness, great is your name. Great is your faithfulness, great is your name. Blessed assurance. And oh, what a grace I'm prone to wonder But you're prone to chase Oh, this is my story It's the song that I'll raise Sing of your goodness All of 
the promises and all of the praise all of your people have sung through the ages no matter the season the song is the same great is your faithfulness great is your name and all of the promises and all of the praises all of sung through the ages no matter the season the song is the same great is your faithfulness great is your name great is your faithfulness great is your name great is your faithfulness great is your name great is your faithfulness great is your strong in battle our God can never fail through him all chains are broken in him the sick are healed come on sing it again our God is strong our God is strong in battle our God can never fail. Through Him all chains are broken. In Him the sick are healed. In the name of Jesus, giants are defeated. Every single mountain has to move. You're faithful to your promise. You finish what you started. There is none as powerful as you, Jesus. Jesus. We see the King of Heaven. Setting the captives free We are the church awakened Shouting in victory In the name of Jesus Giants are defeated Every single mountain has to move you're faithful to your promise. You finish what you started. There is none as powerful as you. In the name of Jesus, giants are defeated. Every single mountain has to move. You're faithful to your promise. You finish what you started. There is none as powerful as you, Jesus. 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 Jesus Alpha Omega Begin the end The Prince of Peace The Everlasting Father Mighty God Oh Lord we exalt you Oh we exalt you No other name No other name That's more 
deserving of glory, more deserving of honor, so we give you the highest praise, Lord. Be lifted higher, be lifted higher, we lift the sound of your great name. Be lifted higher, be lifted higher, Lord we exalt you in of your great name. Be lifted higher, be lifted higher. Lord, we exalt you in our praise. Be lifted higher. Oh, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. defeated every single mountain has to move you're faithful to your promise finish what you started there is none as none as powerful as you in the name of Jesus giants are defeated every single mountain has to move you're faithful to your promise, you finish what you started, there is none as powerful as you, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus. to the King. All glory to you, Jesus. All glory, all praise, all honor to you, Jesus. We honor your name. We make room for you now, God. We make room for the presence of Jesus where we're at. We honor you, Jesus. There's no one like you, none as powerful as you, Jesus. In this morning's reading, there's an account of Jesus going really into an area that's probably mostly Canaanites. And a Canaanite woman with a desperate need came to Jesus. Her daughter was demon-possessed. And she was in a desperate situation and she approaches Jesus asking for him to heal him and she keeps calling out but she's basically told no that it's not for her but she refused to take no for an answer she refused to, and this is to Jesus I, I'm not going to be denied. I have a need. I have a desperate situation. I don't care if the healing's for someone else. I don't care if the breakthrough's for someone else. I don't care if an outpouring's for someone else. I have a need that needs to be met. And I'm not going to take no for an answer. I'm in a desperate situation. And what does Jesus do? He honors her faith. He honors her faith. I don't know what you're going through at home, brothers and sisters, but I know some of us are in a desperate need. And we've been told, no. We've been told, this is not for you. Not this time. I'm so sorry. Come back tomorrow. I'm so sorry. This is not for you. But you're in a desperate situation. The no doesn't change 
your desperate situation. The no doesn't change your need. So I want to encourage you, like the Canaanite woman who was told no, have faith in Jesus. Let your faith rise. Let your faith rise and grab hold of your miracle. Let your faith rise and grab hold of the breakthrough. Do not be denied. Say, I will not be, need, I will not be denied, Jesus. Because I have a need, and you're the great need meter. I need you to touch me. I need you to heal me. I need you to heal my home. I need you to heal my family. I need a breakthrough. I need a job. I need a miracle. Whatever your need is, trust in Jesus. Break through in faith. Tear down the walls that are stopping you in faith. In the name of Jesus, let your faith rise up. I bind up the spirit of doubt and unbelief that has held you back. I bind that off of your life in Jesus' name. And I release fresh faith to be poured into your heart that your faith would rise up now in Jesus' name so that you can grab hold of the promises that God is holding for you. Oh, living water, oh, God, my Savior, if I ever need you, I need you now. Oh, living water, oh, God, my healer.
out of your presence God but Father I just want to tell you that I love you we love you Father we're so thankful for all that you are for all that you are you're so amazing God you're so kind you're so gracious and compassionate and good you're so good God thank you for your forgiveness thank you for your mercy which is new for us every morning thank you that you're so willing to forgive thank you that you don't withhold any good thing from us we love you God we lift up your name, God. We praise you. We love you. We honor you, God. We continue to make room. More room, God. More room, God. More room for you. More room, God. That you would take up more residence in our lives. And everything that's us, take up more room, God. That you could live through us, God. 
that your will would be done through us, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. GT. Good morning, church. Uh, I'm here to just uh, pray over our uh, offering, and I'm going to ask the team to put the links into the thread so that you can uh, find a way, find in your heart to, 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 to give and participate this morning. So uh, you can text to give at 415-335-4900. Um, you can give online through the links will be put online. Visit us at gtsf.org. But I'm just reminded today in the reading on the account of Jesus feeding the, the 4,000. And in that just spoke to me that God can use what you have. And as I pray this morning, God, I pray that you accept the offering, that you take what we have. Lord, you know the needs that we have, you know the needs in the community, you know. And as we approach the end of the month and there's another seven days to go, Lord, you can take these, just like you took those seven loaves and those few fish, Lord, we know that you can multiply them. And Lord, we just pray that through this offering, that you will use it, you know how to use it, you know the needs of the church, the needs of the, of the missionaries, different ministries that are supported by this church, Lord. Take this offering, multiply it, and we thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness. Amen. 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 I'm, uh, having a hard time uh, figuring out if it's time to move on or not. <laughs> struggling here. I'm struggling in a very good way. I, uh, oh, there's one more of these. This microphone has been helped. If you remember last week, we had a little bit of a, a, a mystery about this microphone, and I'm looking at it. Somebody has paid some very good attention to this mic, and our God has paid very good attention to us these past three weeks. Yesterday, we had our final prayer meeting, and just after the end of this service at 12 noon, our start of the year 21 day fast will be complete. For the last three weeks, we spent Monday through Saturday together, 5.30 to 8 a.m. seeking to be people who sit at the feet of Jesus. Seeking to be people who listen to his word and respond with worship and prayer. And I just need to brag on God for a minute. God did some amazing things in our prayer meetings. And I believe he's just beginning. Yesterday was so indescribable that I don't even know how to begin to try to explain it. Instead of coming to a close at 8 a.m. like it was supposed to, the Holy Spirit began doing something brand new at 8 a.m. And no one was going to sign out just because the clock time told us that prayer meeting was supposed to be over. And before we go further into the message this morning, I want to release some of the power of that prayer that we have been experiencing. Though I have to say, one of the ways that God has most clearly been working in us was in showing us that He works in us as a body. What do I mean by that? The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 14, 14 compares the church 
to a human body. The, the eye is for one thing and the hand is for another. The ear has one purpose and the foot a completely different one. And each part needs the other. Each part needs every other. Which means they have to be joined together with each one doing its part. I think we all agree that our bodies work best when they are joined together and they do their part. If my foot decided not to walk anymore, it'd be pretty funny when I... Yeah, I think I'd be a face plan. In the exact same way, God puts us together with other believers. And through His Spirit, we're able to do something together that none of us could do on our own. Yesterday morning, before prayer meeting, God gives one person a dream. In the middle of the night, a dream about someone being abused as a child. Then during worship, God speaks independently to others of, about healing hurts from childhood wounds. And as it turns out, there's more than one person in this prayer meeting, and one person in particular who is actively working through the pain of being abused as a child, desperately seeking healing. That's the reason they came to that prayer meeting, as someone who doesn't normally come to prayer meeting. And none of this would have happened. None of this would have ever come out if the Holy Spirit hadn't directed me to shift gears in worship and, and suddenly focus on forgiveness and on the healing of our hearts and the letting go of wounds. God gave a handful of people a different piece of the puzzle, but we never would have put it together. We never would have been able to see the picture that God intended if each one of us didn't do our heart. So when I announce to you our next round of connect groups or our next prayer meetings, which will resume in March, the first week of March, I really hope that you will take seriously the possibility that God has gifts that he wants to give in the form of you. He wants to give you to other people and he wants to give gifts to others to you in the form of us. He wants to put you and I together with other believers so that together we can do what no single one of us would be able to do as individuals, just like he's shown us in such a thrilling way in our prayer meetings. And if you can't figure out how the words thrilling and prayer meeting belong together in the same sentence, then I pray that the Holy Spirit give you a hunger for the gifts of His Spirit. I pray right now that He would give you a hunger for the presence of His Spirit, for the moving of His Spirit, the activation of those gifts within us, within individuals, within normal people like you and me, not hyper-spiritual people, just regular people that God chooses by His grace to deposit a gift of His Spirit in to contribute to the whole church for the building up of everyone, for the revealing of secret things, hidden things. And those gifts that I'm talking about, they are for the building up of God's church and also to confirm the message that what we preach about Jesus is true. So when we come together to seek Him, we can expect His Spirit to move among us. And when we go out to proclaim Him, we can also expect His Spirit to rest upon us. But if the whole of our Christian commitment is 60 to 90 minutes on a Sunday morning, we're probably going to think that Christianity is boring. And people who don't know God are probably going to think that Christianity is boring because we're boring. And that's because we never put ourselves in the environment or in the situations where the power of God's Spirit is designed to work. This, just, this is a really simple illustration. It came to mind just a few minutes ago. I accidentally sang a song in the wrong key. It was too high. I turned around to Brother Derek and I said, I went up a step. And I'm thinking in my head, I can't sing this high. I can't sing this high. I've been singing for three weeks every morning straight. My voice doesn't have it. But I just, you know what? I went for it. I put myself in an uncomfortable position. I put myself in a situation where I didn't feel like I had the natural resources to do what I was trying to do. 
And it's the same way for us when we step out in faith for God, when we put ourselves in situations where we are not going to be able to do what we're trying to do if His Spirit doesn't come and rest on us. Try praying for someone to be healed when they're sick. You better believe that you know in that moment if God's Spirit doesn't come and do something, there is nothing about you that would enable you to have the power to heal somebody who is sick. That's what these gifts are designed to do. And so I, again, I say, when we come together for prayer again, I encourage you to join us. When we announce connect groups, God's Spirit was moving in connect groups big time in December. One group had to ask me, can we keep meeting? It's too good to stop. Because they discovered the secret of the gifts that God had given each one of them to contribute to all of them that none of them would have ever had if they hadn't all joined together to make the puzzle that God had designed for them. It was a gift of His Spirit to them. And so quickly, I want to pray. Again, I, it, it, it's just something I felt led by the Spirit to do. We're not together in the same way that we've been together these last 21 days in the way that I'm talking about how when we get together, God's power is at work among us in an incredible way. But He also says that wherever two or three are gathered, if they agree on anything in Jesus' name, God will answer in order to bring Himself glory. And we have seen the power of God and the faithfulness of God to answer prayer in these last 21 days. And I've got twice as many as two or three gathered maybe three times as many as three gathered here who can agree with me that right now in Jesus name God will touch you by the power of his Holy Spirit if you are feeling down right now his spirit would lift you up you would feel it in your heart even now as you listen to me pray maybe wondering why I'm shouting so loud I'm shouting because I'm passionate about the fact that God reaches into our lives and he actually changes our situations he renews our hearts he restores broken things within us and makes them whole. And I'm praying that He would do that in you even now. If your heart is broken, I pray that you would begin to heal or experience the comfort of the Spirit of God. If you don't even believe in God and you can't figure out why you're listening to me right now, I pray that He would reveal Himself to you in a powerful way. He would bring you to your knees right now in wonder at the goodness of His love. That He would shower down His Spirit upon you. And I pray that if your body, if you need healing in your body, if you are sick, I pray that He would release the power of healing in you right now in Jesus' name. I pray that broken legs and arms would be healed. I pray that damaged and diseased organs would be healed. I pray that immune disorders would be healed. I pray that blood disorders would be healed right now in Jesus' name. And most of all, I pray that you would pour out a passion for the things of God. You would pour out a passion for the kingdom of God in every single person who's listening right now. That you would reorder their priorities in their hearts. Even as I pray that they would begin to long for the things that you long for and love the things that you love. God, that you would call them by name and take hold of them in a way where they never want to let go of you. Give them hunger. Give them true spiritual hunger, passion and desperation for a living relationship with a living God. I pray that you would do all this and more. All this and more. That you would break addiction right now in Jesus' name. That you would set somebody free who is addicted. It might not be to a substance. It might be to an activity. It might be to, to, to approval or affirmation or attention or popularity. But break the power of every addiction. Break the power of every chain right now in the name of Jesus. Everything that binds men and women that you created to be your sons and daughters. Everything that restricts them from stepping into the fullness of everything that you created them to be. We break the power of those chains in Jesus' name. And we say you are free. You are free to be everything that God wants for you. Because He loves you and He died to make you free, to break that power. We agree together for all these things and more, more than we can think of, more than we can pray for, more than we can imagine. 
Because that's what you said you do. We agree for it right now. In Jesus' name. Oh. As we transition from this season of seeking, of seeking first the kingdom of God in a focused way, a number of pastoral concerns come to my heart and mind. First, if it's good, good enough, if it's important enough to do for 21 days, why wouldn't we do it for the other 344? The short answer is, yeah, it is. And that's exactly what I want for you. Not for you to do a year-long Daniel fast. I'm not, I'm not asking you that. I'm not saying we're going to have prayer meetings every morning this year. But if the Holy Spirit said that, you better believe I'd say, yes, Lord. What I mean is, what do you have to do to make the discipline of prayer a daily part of your life? This is the reason we started having prayer meetings the first week of the month instead of just at the beginning of the year. Because my friend Kevin Noonan, who pastors Limitless Church down in Burlingame, he asked himself that same question after one of their beginning of the year fasts and prayer meetings. He asked, what can I do to help the people of my church have a consistent time of prayer? A consistent time where they're connecting to the presence of God and the Word of God. And he thought about having one week per month, the first week of every month, have prayer meetings. That would be a good way to encourage people to continue the habit, the discipline of daily prayer, worship, and time in the Word. So tomorrow will be our first day since January 4 with no prayer meeting. If you've been joining us, today I challenge you to get up at the same time tomorrow and seek Him. If you haven't been joining us, today I challenge you to get up in the morning tomorrow and seek Him. We have experienced His goodness, His faithfulness to answer prayer, to let us know that He sees the situations we're in. We've experienced the strength that comes from our increasing dependence upon God. We've found truth that speaks to our situations, to our days, and to our lives. And if these are things that we discover by seeking the Lord each day, then why wouldn't we continue to do so? That's my first question. The other question that is challenging me, now that we're ending our fast, the question is, what should the marks or the characteristics be of people who have sat at the feet of Jesus? What should we expect to be like? What should I expect my brothers and sisters to be like who are praying every day, who are sitting in His presence? What should others see in us that sets, sets us apart in their eyes from people who don't know Him. I've mentioned this before, but it's worth repeating. The founder of our church's movement, the modern Pentecostal movement, William Seymour, all the way back in the, in the early 1900s, said that the most distinctive characteristic of a person who claims to have a, a more intimate experience of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. That distinctive thing isn't speaking in tongues. It's not having the prophetic gift or the ability to perform miracles. He valued and pursued all of those things. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 says, eagerly pursue the spiritual gifts. And he did. And I believe that they should be part of our everyday Christianity. But he said that surely if we've been in his presence, if we've sat at his feet, if we've heard his voice, if we've seen a glimpse of his glory, it should be the quality of our love above all else that sets us apart from anyone else. In fact, that verse I just quoted from 1 Corinthians 14 about eagerly desiring the gifts of the Spirit, it starts out with the words, follow the way of love. And Paul has just written an entire chapter about how love is the most important thing, even with all those spiritual gifts. 
So what does it look like to love as Jesus loved? What does it look like to love in the way that we're loved by him? To lay down our lives for one another so that the message of his grace can reach the ends of the earth. I think it looks like getting up from Jesus' feet and joining in the work that he's doing. And when Jesus gives his mission statement in the Bible in Luke chapter 4, He's teaching in the synagogue on a Sabbath day. He opens up the scroll of Isaiah and he reads from chapters 61 and 58. He does an amazing thing and and mushes them together in a way that probably never had been done before. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. (laughs) I love that last line. But today I want to ask the question, what do we think Jesus meant? Do we ever stop to think about what he meant when he said, Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor? Now, if you've ever been poor, I'm guessing that it wouldn't be too hard to identify or to name what good news would mean to you if you heard somebody say, I've been anointed to preach good news. I think at the very least it would be food, clothing, housing, and belonging. That last one might surprise you, but poverty is a socially isolating experience. It's very lonely. Now, in Luke chapter 3, John the Baptist is preaching to prepare people for the arrival of God's kingdom, to prepare people for the message of Jesus, in fact. And in response to his preaching, the crowds say this in verse 10. What should we do? What should we do about, about this, this call for repentance? What should we do? How should we live in light of the message that you're preaching to us? What do we need to do to change in light of the fact of, that this kingdom of God is coming? It's arriving like you're saying. And John replies, if you have two shirts, give one to the poor. And if you have food, share it with those who are hungry. A few chapters later, in Luke chapter 6, it's Jesus teaching again. And the message is going to begin to sound familiar. He says this in verse 30. Give to anyone who asks. And when things are taken away from you, don't even try to get them back. Just do to others as you would want them to do to you. And hey, by the way, if you only lend money to people who can pay you back, why should God give you credit for that? Even people who hate God lend money to people they know can pay them back. I'm telling you to think differently. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without even expecting to be repaid. (laughs) Then your reward from heaven will be truly great. And you will be acting as a child of the Most High. For he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. I don't mean to make light of this, but as I read these words, then your reward from heaven. Many of you, you know, it's been on your radar. You've been watching it in the news. The Powerball jackpot, which I don't play, but they're just talking about it on the news and I'm listening, has been gradually approaching the $1 billion mark. And nobody's been winning the Powerball jackpot until somebody in Michigan over by Detroit, Jasmine's hometown, scored the winning numbers on a $1.05 billion Powerball ticket. Now that's quite a reward. And what I want to tell you, when I read the words a moment ago, then your reward from heaven will be very great. What went through my head is, oh God, any day of the week, I would rather have the reward from heaven than $1.05 billion. Because I know that the reward from heaven is something that no amount of money could ever buy. And I could have all that money and not have the reward that you alone give and I would still feel empty inside. 
Now, I've never had $1.05 billion, so maybe I don't have the authority in your eyes to say that, but I've got the conviction from the Holy Ghost that it's true. In verse 38, Jesus says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, this is a grain illustration. Grain. Some of you don't even know what word I'm saying. G-R-A-I-N. Like wheat, corn, uh, millet, some of that other weird stuff we're eating because it's a Daniel fast right now. (laughs) You don't understand the grain illustration of pressed down, shaken together, and, and running over. So let me give you a soda illustration. How many of you, when you go to the soda fountain, the self serve soda fountain, you're getting your Sprite or your whatever, and you're filling it up, and the, you know, the bubbles, the bubbles hit the top while the soda's still like three quarters of the way down. Well, you don't take it and put your lid on and your straw in and walk away. Uh, you shake, 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 shake. You let those bubbles dial down, and you put it in there, and you get some more Sprite. And when it's almost, you know, it's fizzy, 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 it's like coming over just a little bit. You quick pull it, you quick stop, and you wait. And even if there's just a tiny little bit of room left in your cup, you're going to stick that thing in there and get your last little bit of Sprite, aren't you? Some of, some of you. Some, anyway, it's free refills. So some of the rest of you are like, why does it matter? Just go back and get a refill. <laughs> but that's what it means. It means he's taking the measure and he's figuring out how to make it hold more for you in return, in response, as a reward for your generosity. This was actually the emphasis of our fast two years ago. Some of you will remember, we spent the entire fast focusing on the chapter of 58 of the book of Isaiah, which really is an echo of one of the great themes of all of the Torah and the prophets of the whole Old Testament. I encourage you to read the entire chapter. We can't do it this morning. But to summarize, it's a chapter where God gets real honest with His people with, uh, uh, with his assessment of their religious activity, specifically about fasting. And his message to his people is harsh. He says, you are the only ones pleased with your fasting. You're just patting yourselves on the back for how spiritual and how disciplined you are. But if you're truly concerned with pleasing me, then you will stop mistreating and oppressing people. You will stop your fighting and your quarreling. You will free those who have been falsely imprisoned. You will remove the chains that bind people. You will share your food with the hungry, give shelter to the homeless, and give clothes to those who need them. This is starting to sound a lot like the New Testament. These are the things that will move heaven. These are the things that please me says the Lord. So we dedicated an entire fast as a prayer to God that we would become a people, a church who is generous. People who have listened to Cain's question to God, am I my brother's keeper? And who have answered an emphatic, yes, I am my brother's keeper. And I can't tell you how pleased I am to say that generosity has unquestionably become a part of GT's DNA. It seems like every month last year, I was asking you, I was challenging you to give to something, something like A21 or Project Rescue to end human trafficking, relief for four different areas hit by wildfires last year, or hurricane hurricanes that hit uh, uh, Louisiana and the southern United States, a house for a needy family in El Salvador, damage from Typhoon Ulysses in the Philippines and Hurricane Eda in Nicaragua, Christmas gifts to families in need, food distribution in Ecuador. And this is just to name a few of all the ways that we were able to bless our congregation, our community, our nation, and the world through your generosity in 2020. So I want to affirm you and I want to celebrate God's faithfulness because he's done exactly what he said he would do with the Sprite cup. He's shaken it together and he's waited for the the, the fizz to get out of there and he's put more in so that we can give more. And I want to challenge you as well. First, 
If you're not already in the practice of giving 10% to God, I challenge you to test God. Yes, you heard me. Test Him. This is the one place in Scripture where God actually tells us to test Him. You've probably heard this verse before at offering time. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test, he says. Now here's what I want you to notice. All the times I've ever heard this verse preached or quoted in church, I've never heard anyone point this out. That the purpose of bringing in the tithe according to God is what? It's to have enough food in the temple. Why would there need to be food in the temple? Work with me here. To give those who need food. It's called a storehouse for a reason, to store up food for the needy. Now, again, most of us don't live in a grain, a farming economy anymore. So we don't bring 10% of our wheat or our millet or, or whatever, our grape crop. We don't bring it here. Don't, you can't pay grapes through text to give. But the point is the same. We bring our 10% to God's house so that there will be enough resources to give to everyone who has need. It doesn't matter if you go to a house church or if you go to a mega church. That is the primary purpose of the tithe. Can you just imagine? I can't remember what the percentage is, but it's very low of Americans, Christians who tithe. Can you imagine if the entire church in America tithed? We would be able to wipe out world hunger. We'd be able to build training centers where people without job skills could get them and pair them with mentors who could help them. We could finance youth programs in every inner city in this country and probably around the world to reach every single child with the message that they are loved by God and then to give them the tools they need to build a strong future and contribute to a stronger community where they live. Who knows? We might even be able to build entire towns where widows could care for orphans like the ones that Christian Life Church has built in Kampala, Uganda. Our political parties would have to find something different to argue about because the church would be taking such good care of the poor, the orphans, and the immigrants that they wouldn't require assistance from the government. Now, whenever I talk about tithing, I'm always careful to say, I don't want your money. I'm not trying to get a bigger house or, or a nicer car. It's not about my salary. It's not about the money. It's about our mission. Our mission. What I want is for the storehouse to overflow, for there always to be enough resources in the house of God to help everyone who needs it. I want us to have to seek out needs to be met instead of having to ask for help meeting needs. And actually that's begun to happen. I hope to have an incredible news for you at some point in the near future. And I don't want your money as much as I want you to experience the reward of obedience to God's word. The testimony of so many people through the generations that there is greater blessing and abundance in living on the 90% when you give God 10% than there was when I was living on the original 100% because it's been shaken together and put back under the machine. Give and it will be given to you. Here's how convinced of this I am. If today is the day that you take the step of faith and obedience to God and give him 10% of everything you get, designate your gift test. You can do it on, tithe, uh, on Tithely on our website. You can do it on PayPal. You can just put test in the comments. You can do it everywhere it has the designation test. Here's what I will do. First, I'll give 10% of that money to missions. 
Because I'm not going to ask you to trust God in a way that we're not willing to trust God as a church. I will put the rest of that money in a reserve account for six months. And after six months, if God hasn't confirmed in your life that there is a greater blessing on living with the 90 and giving God 10, I'll give you your money back minus the 1% that we gave to missions. And if all that money's still there, because I think God keeps his promises, all of the money that's left after six months will go into our, this, this should sound familiar, Isaiah 58 fund. Isaiah 58 is our storehouse. It's the storehouse that we created in obedience to God's word as we fasted two years ago. It's the resource that we draw from when anyone reaches out to the church to ask for help with needs. If you already tithe, but you've heard us talk about 1010 at offerings, or maybe in some of our newsletters and you're not sure what it means, 1010 is a designation, T-E-N, one zero, that means I've given my 10%. Here's another 1%, a tithe of my tithe, or a tenth of my tenth. And those funds, we use those to support our 18 international, uh, international ministry partners working in 15 countries around the world, bringing the hope of Jesus and the love of Jesus. I'm telling you, everyone tithed, I think we would be able to support 40 overseas partners instead of 20. But I also want to be very clear. Generosity isn't just about giving money. We have excelled in generosity in giving money in the year 2020. And I'm celebrating you and I'm celebrating God. But in 2021, I want to add another dimension of generosity into our DNA. And that has to do with time. As I mentioned, because our church was closed down for most of the year, 2020 actually forced us to get creative about how to live out our vision, to love God, love each other, love the city, and to change the world. We started helping off, or started helping at the food bank right behind us at the Rosa Parks Elementary School. A small number of people offered to help prepare and deliver meals to people who shouldn't be leaving their homes. And others, mostly staff, did grocery and pharmacy runs and helped with other needs in the congregation. But right now, three of our strategic partners here in this city have been hit hard by the pandemic because they rely on visiting missions teams from around the country to do the work of the ministry that God has called them to do. I'm talking about YWAM, I'm talking about City Impact and the Homeless Church. Even with our building closed, we're going to need children's teachers. We're going to need sound and media people. The building is going to open again. We're going to need parking lot attendants and hosts and greeters and ushers and baristas. But right now, there are some needy people in our city who need to hear good news. They need food. They need clothing. They need shelter from the streets. And they need a sense of being cared for, of belonging. Uh, there's a link going in the comments right now for ways that you can, you can sign up to help with these. I realize that many of them on our weekdays, if you can't make it, I completely understand. But then I'm going to challenge you to go to our website, gtsf.org slash volunteer, or click that link that Michael Stoutmeyer is going to put in the comments right now. Send us a message. Tell us what your availability is. What times are you available? And whatever gift God might have put in your heart to do, to share with your community, with God's people and beyond. I'm challenging us to go beyond giving to the cause and step into being the cause. Step into that place that I was describing earlier where we end up in situations where unless the power of God does something to equip us, the challenge we're facing is going to be impossible. I'm challenging us this year. This fast, the one that ends in 40 minutes, <laughs> this fast has been about making us a people of His presence. And I believe, mm, you write down today's date, I believe that we are going to see God answer that prayer in the very same way that He has already answered our prayer, that we would become a generous church. 
I believe in two years we're going to look back and we're going to say the presence of God has rested upon glad tidings, has rested upon its services, rested upon its people in a miraculous way, in a way that is better than we ever could have imagined, in a way that's fulfilled the desires of so many of our hearts. If God answered our prayer two years ago to make us generous and we're looking back celebrating, I have exactly the same confidence that we'll be in exactly the same situation two years from now, looking back over what God has done in terms of pouring out His presence on His people, on you, on me, on our families, in our homes, in our schools, our workplaces, our community. And I believe the overflow of that is going to be more and more people getting up from the feet of Jesus and setting out to do the work that Jesus said he came to do. More and more parts of this body waking up and realizing that God has given you a role to play in this thing that he wants to do in San Francisco. Here's how convinced of this I am. Here's how convinced I am that when Jesus said in Mark 10, 45, that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. I'm convinced that he was laying down an example for us to follow. Now there's a business meeting coming up. At the business meeting, you're going to vote. Uh, don't let this surprise you. It's just what happens at three years after I've been elected. It's in our Constitution and bylaws. It's not a surprise. But you're going to vote on whether or not to keep me on as pastor at GT. Between now and that business meeting, we're going to have a membership class. And all the new members will be told that they are expected to serve in some capacity. Notice that, that I, I'm not saying you have to be a greeter or an usher or a host or a barista or work in media. I'm not saying those things. You can serve at YWAM. You can serve at City Impact. You can serve at the homeless church. But if we're Christians, we should be serving. At this membership class, I'm going to quote this quote from Francis Chan. And, and then when I'm reading this quote to the new members, I'll remind them that I didn't write this. So don't be mad at me. This is the quote I'm going to read to them at the members meeting or the uh, membership class. Francis Chan says this. Don't you see the weirdness in calling people Christian when they aren't servants? No team puts up with players who refuse to contribute. No army puts up with soldiers who don't carry their own weight. Why do churches continue to put up with Christians who refuse to serve? Why don't we treat selfishness as a sin that needs to be confronted? Wow. I'm going to read that to, to the membership class. At the root of our calling is a command from Jesus to imitate him by serving one another. Isn't it a bit strange that the church gives so many people a free pass? I believe the result of this will be a group of people. This is me now, not Francis Chan. The results of this will be a group of people working together, a body of people coming and joining together, filled with the gifts and the passions God has given them and the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit has anointed them with. And we will see a momentum build at GT like nothing we have ever seen before, with the results being an increased reach of our ministry, the growth of existing ministries, and the birth of brand new ministries that we haven't even thought of yet, but God is going to deposit into your heart as you serve. More of you will be stepping into leadership and into the dreams that God has given you. And through that, more and more San Franciscans will be drawn to the light, drawn to the love, drawn to the truth of Jesus as we, together, in a combined way, love and serve and volunteer and minister and show His love to more people in more places that none of us would ever be able to cover on our own. But together... 
And but with the Spirit of God empowering us, we will see good news preached to the poor. We will see the physically and spiritually blind recover their sight. We will see prisoners set free from captivity. We will see the chains that bind people broken. And together we will declare the year of the Lord's favor. I believe it. And I'm challenging you to step into it. It might sound impossible. Well, I'm going to share a little bit of thing with you right now. It sounds impossible to me as well. But I never would have thought that we could have given like we did this year in 2020 with everything that happened. That is impossible, but I'm looking back on it and it happened. So I'm looking into the future at this and thinking it's impossible, but God's saying, with me, nothing is impossible. God probably doesn't even think we're dreaming big enough. And I think this is just a freebie. I'll keep this one. I think that eventually all these new members who are serving are going to convict the older members. And I, I'm not ragging on any older members. I'm just saying that the culture of serving will become so contagious that whether you've been here for five minutes or 50 years, you just can't imagine not serving. Because as part of the character of Jesus, it's part of the way that he pours his goodness into our lives. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. In the end, it's not even really about giving. It's about trust. It's about trust that he is who he says he is. It's about trusting that he'll do what he says he can do. We're gonna sing this song in closing. that if God's not already speaking to you he will speak to you in these last few moments as we sing as we ask him to make us more like him to follow in his steps and to do what the spirit of the Lord has anointed us to do which is what the spirit of the Lord has always been anointing his church to do sometimes we've forgotten to do it to the world you created trading your crown for a cross you willingly died your innocent life paid the cost counting your status as nothing the king of all kings came to serve Washing my feet, covering me with your love. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need, so take everything. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need, so take everything. Oh, Lord, change me like only you can. I'm here with my heart in your Father, I pray, make me more like Jesus. This world 
is dying to know who you are. You showed us the way to your heart. So Father, I pray, make me more like Jesus. my life and my treasure the one that I can't live without here at your feet my desires and my dreams I lay down here at your feet my desires and my dreams I lay down oh Lord Change me like only you can I'm here with my heart in your hands Father, I pray, make me more like Jesus This world is dying to know who you are You've shown us the way to your heart so Father, I pray, make me more like Jesus, oh Lord, and change me like only you can. I'm here with my heart in your hands. The Father, I pray, make me more like Jesus. This world is dying to know who way to your heart. Oh, Father, I pray, make me more like Jesus. Make me more like Jesus. Make me more like Jesus. Make me more like our lives. Oh, call us to you. Call us to follow you, Lord. Where you lead, I will go. What you do, oh, what you say, I will do. I will follow. I will trust you, Lord. If more of you means less of me, take every Yes, all of you is all I need, so take everything. So, in my heart, what we're doing at this moment, 11.35 on January 24, the end of our fast, what we're doing is we're getting up from your feet. We're getting up from this time, from this season, this extended time we spent in your presence, sitting at your feet. And of course we're going to return to that place, but right now we're getting up to go and do, to join with you in the work that you said you came to do. So I pray right now that each person Only you can do this. That you would take the different parts of the body that you have called into existence and that you have placed together in this, this year 2021 in this city, San Francisco, in this church we call Glad Tidings, that you would take them, awaken them, and join them together and release them into the miracle, into the supernatural life that you have called us to be. And we know that you will anoint us 
if we set out to do the work that you said you were anointed to do. So we step into that. We step into it in trust and in faith. It might cause us some discomfort. It might mean we have to, to lay down some things that we don't really feel like laying down. But the reward of heaven, I pray that you put a conviction in every single heart that the reward of heaven as your word says, nothing in this world is worth being compared to that reward that we will receive. When we walk after you, when we follow after you in obedient trust to do what you've called us to do, what you have anointed us to do, we will go, we will trust you, we'll do the work, we'll give. In Jesus' name, we pray and agree that you will make it happen and that we will cooperate with your call. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a challenge for you at the beginning of your year, but I waited until after the fast. So I hope you've soaked in so much of God's goodness that you're just aching to have him release you into what he's calling us to do. Amen. We'll see you next week. God bless you. God bless you.